Hey guys, it's your girl, Crystal Nicole. So today's video will not be a fancy edited one, just straight talk on the recent happenings of the lawsuit between Jennifer Huff and the Petties. So those of you just listening today, you can, as I'm not sharing anything on the screen. I've already shared all documents on my community tab that's related. So let's go ahead and get into that. So yesterday was the hearing for Kenneth Petty's default arguments to be heard. Now, I and a lot of you were under the impression that a decision would also be made on the same day. However, that is not always the case, and that is not what happened here. The judge has taken the situation under advisement, which means he will more than likely make a written decision to explain his reasons in detail. Now, this is common, and it happens all the time because tensions run high in a courtroom and sometimes the judge just wants to go over everything one last time and do some research before rendering a final decision that should be in soon so we will just have to wait on that and i highly doubt that they got their default and here's why the plaintiff side had no real arguments for the default. They kind of defeated the purpose of even being there over a default by admitting they would have given the defendants more time to respond. And the defendant, Kenneth, had responded in the time frame they would have given him. So they were basically at a default hearing for no reason. Kenneth had and was responding. He explained his reason for delay. He denied the accusations. His attorney was already requesting a dismissal due to the non-proper service issue, which avoids the case altogether and would force Jennifer to start all over again. So it would seem like the default was only continued on to delay the next proceedings to dismiss the case for the reasons given by Kenneth's attorney, which would be they violated the rule 55.5 one issue it was past the statute of limitations it was the wrong jurisdiction if we take away the alleged assault claims and kenneth could defend himself against her accusations and jennifer's team could not make their arguments about willful delay due to his criminal cases as those were completely unrelated to this case yet that's all the arguments that they had so do i see the default being granted no, as it's common to allow defendants to late respond. Now, if it was vacated, the judge already knows what the dismissal would be regarding, which is the service issue, which is a part of the default arguments. So if the judge agrees that the service wasn't proper, then I also see him going ahead and dismissing this case against Kenneth. But that's only if he also agrees with the statute of limitations arguments made, because that's the only real case Jennifer could attempt to pursue in New York if the judge does not agree. So we will see about that. So let's go ahead and talk about these sanctions. So again... These sanction warnings have been being sent by Judd to Tyrone since November to convince them to drop the frivolous lawsuit against Nikki due to a lot of frivolous claims being made by both Jennifer and Tyrone in the lawsuit and publicly. We all know why he would be coming after Jennifer, given all the inconsistent statements made by Jennifer and her multiple interviews that have all been laid out in a neat little timeline by me in multiple videos, which is the reason Judd was thanking me for all my help. For those of you who did not understand why that email happened, it is not because I'm breaking down the lawsuit for the public. These videos that you all have seen and a lot have shared all over social media is what was used to help discover all of these things about Jennifer. So again, thank you to all of those who tuned in and shared those videos. That is what helped them get noticed by the people who needed to see them the most. 
Now, if anybody missed those videos, I suggest you go catch up to get an understanding on why these sanctions are being filed. Now, not only is it because of the frivolous claims being made, it is also due to the antics of the plaintiff's side. First of all, filing in the wrong jurisdiction and trying to use old addresses as their basis for being allowed to file there and trying to use Jennifer filling some type of way in Georgia while Nikki was either in New York doing turkey giveaways and meeting Kenneth or allegedly sending goons from New York to harass her with money offers while not being in New York herself when any of these things allegedly occurred as there are other justifications and reasonings to file the suit in New York when it was argued against by Judd when the default was filed all of which are not good reasons to be able to file a suit against Nikki in New York. And any good attorney would have known this and advised Jennifer to file in the correct state. So it speaks volumes about Tyrone for this to be his second case where he failed to notice key rules and statutes that caused it to be dropped. Secondly, not following a basic code of ethics like giving the defendants a chance to respond when asked by their attorney. Instead, Tyrone chooses to be petty about it and run to the blogs to explain his reasonings and then claim that the defendants think that they were above the law when this is a common thing to happen. Like Stephen Gordon just said in the hearing, he would have at least given the defendants an extra 30 days to respond before going for the default. However, Stephen was not there. That was all Tyrone's doing. So Tyrone also failed on that end as the lead attorney. Maybe this is why they don't let him speak at the hearings. I don't know. Third, failing to make sure his client had factual claims to back up her suit failing to do his due diligence as an attorney to research the claims made by his client and then making up claims himself that were not factual given certain evidence provided etc now the sanctions judge wants to file should be in on the 26th if the judge agrees to the schedule and we should be able to see all the reasons why judd is filing them outside of wanting his attorney fees paid by the plaintiff and not nikki due to the waste of time and resources used to defend his client on such a frivolous case now, Tyrone and Steven have been making assertions that Jennifer would be refiling her case in California, and this is why the case against Nikki was dropped due to the jurisdiction issue after not giving a response the first time. This response, again, is one of the reasons why the sanctions are being filed. How do you just now realize that it's the wrong jurisdiction? So like Judd said, and I agree with, this is a BS response for the media and public sake. As if they knew anything about the law, they would realize by now that if Jennifer attempts to refile this in LA, she will face the exact same sanction she's getting ready to face in New York for filing a frivolous claim. If Jennifer refiles her claims, she's going to have to change the terms of her lawsuit. And if she changes what she originally put in this lawsuit that she alleged was all factual underneath penalty of perjury, this claim will be used against the new one to cause doubt. And if she attempts to refile the exact same complaint, well, she will face the exact same problem. So if the judge imposes the sanctions that judge that judge files because he presents good evidence and reasoning, I'd say Jennifer will have a tough time getting another attorney to help her in L.A. And how will she afford it after having a three hundred thousand dollar debt and lawyer fees for Nikki's attorney? Now, if Tyrone and Jennifer did not drop Nikki due to the 15 page ultimatum that i'm going to call it that they were sent 
they would have been agreed to the schedule Judd has been trying to set to put in the motions for sanctions to argue against it and just be done with it because what Judd is claiming is not true, like they say. So back it up. They also, again, would not have just now figured out it was the wrong jurisdiction. What was the wow factor that finally made that clear to them? The fact that they are trying not to face these sanctions, let us all know it was due to those sanctions and not this so-called jurisdiction issue for the drop on Nikki's case. Now, apparently, Tara, the lawyer that just withdrew, will be included in the sanctions, and all attorneys are underneath the impression these sanctions cannot be imposed against them because they voluntarily withdrew the complaint and themselves. But Judd is saying that is not the case, and he wants to schedule orders so they can get on with it because Nikki has a right to file them, regardless if they feel like they can argue against them. And he's also welcomed them to impose sanctions on him if they feel like he's in the wrong. So let's see what all parties do. Now, lawsuits can be a very drawn out process. Any court case can be a long drawn out process and they definitely require patience and as much as i know a lot of you just want this to be over reality is it doesn't always happen that quickly in a court of law as nikki and jennifer are not all they are dealing with so just relax and trust the process it will all work out how it should in the end if you know that Jennifer has not been honest concerning this situation, then there is nothing to worry about. She can attempt to refile all she wants, but given how this first one is turning out, I wouldn't have no worries about how the second one will turn out if it ever happens. Until it's refiled, that is the least of my concern. They can keep claiming it all they want to. I'll believe it when I see it. Until then. I'll see you all in the next update. Later.